Today we'll be looking at the male reproductive system. In particular, we'll be seeing the testes in its entirety. Now, what I'm holding in front is the testes bear. But to understand this, first you need to have an idea of where the testes is located and what are the layers covering it. For that, we'll use this model. Now, this is a model showing the pelvic viscera, so the organs present there. You can see the rectum on the back side. Here is the bladder right on top, actually you can see from the superior view. And below that you can see the prostate. This is the male's uh, pelvic viscera after all. And at this point is the scrotum. If I were to turn it anteriorly, you can see two cut sections, each showing a different uh, appearance of the testes. Now, externally we have the scrotum, which is made up of skin, as well as superficial fascia and a muscle known as the dartos muscles. If we were to remove all that, we then come to this appearance. Now, over here, there's actually one more layer covering this. There are three different fascias covering the testes. The external spermatic fascia, the cremasteric fascia, which is the one you see right here with all these red fibers, the cremasteric muscles, and below this, the internal spermatic fascia. These three fascias are actually originating from your abdomen. And this is why when you contract your abdominal muscles, you can feel the pull of the testes for the men. That is because these three fascia are also pulling on the testes. But once we remove all these three fascias, we're then exposed to the testes right over here, the innate actuality. This is covered with a layer known as tunica vaginalis, which is also not shown here. It's also not in the specimen, but it's a layer of peritone which covers the front side of the testes. The main fibrous covering is known as tunica albuginea. This thick curved appearance you see on top of the testes is the epididymis. It is from here, near the tail end, that you have the ductus deferens rising. This is a, basically the, co, uh, the tube which passes from the testes and carries all the sperm back up to the backside into the prostate. You see over here, once the tube, uh, here we are, here's one of the tube. You can see how over here, you, this tube that you're seeing here, the ductus deferens, also known as the vas deferens, it comes to the seminal vesicle located on the back side of the bladder. And here you can see the cut section of the bladder. Right behind it, you have the seminal vesicles, which obviously secretes the seminal fluid. But the sperm is actually coming from the testes right over here. They are formed over here. And obviously, it will then enter into the prostate. Here you can see a cut section of the prostate. Purple on the outside here. This is where you have the input of the seminal vesicles as well as the sperm from the testes. And then they will, during the ejaculation, they are discharged through the urethra. Now, with this basic knowledge covered, and one more thing to mention was that this entire testes is suspended with that same duct, the ductus deferens. But along with that duct, you have arteries, veins, and nerves. This is the pempiniform venous plexus in blue. While the arteries are located inside, they are basically the testicular arteries, as well as the uh, cremasteric arteries, and nerves such as the genitofemoral nerve. With that covered, now let's look at the actual specimen. Here, once again, you can see the testes and you're basically seeing this image right now. You can appreciate the epididymis right on top, a bit of its layer, and the tunica albuginea, the thick fibrous core uh, layer around the testes. Well, it's basically the outer wall. It's the whole testes covering. But if I were to remove it and cut it open, since this is a dissected specimen, the actual parenchyma of the testes on the inside has been shriveled. This is where you have the seminiferous tubules where the sperm is formed. And you can see how it's a shriveled mass right now. A bit of these wriggly things you see here. And uh, this is actually, it was much more bigger than this. And it was covered with this tunica albuginea on the outside. The internal spermatic fascia, the cremasteric and external have all been removed along with the coverings of the spermatic cord. But the spermatic cord itself is still there. And we can see multiple things branching out of it. 
The one main thing I want to show you is this one right here. This is the ductus deferens. And if you go to follow it down below, you can see how this is coming from the tail end right over here. This is where the sperm exits and goes up to enter into the seminal vesicle. So let's pass a small needle right over here. This is the ductus deferens. The other things you see here include arteries and veins. This one is a bit of a, another vessel and here is another vessel. Let's put a red for this one. No, this is blue. Here we go. For here, for the vessels, you can tell by their curved appearance. I'm putting a red pinkish pin over here. So we have the ductus deferens. We have the vessel over here. This one is uh, most probably a nerve because I cannot see a lumen in this. It's quite thick. So we'll put a yellow pin on this one. It's most probably the genital branch or the genital femoral nerve. And I'm passing a needle through this one as well. Let's pass it through here. And with that done, we can see how there are multiple structures entering into the testes via the spermatic cord. Beyond this, there's not much else to see here as since all the layers have been removed. Majority of the spotting is usually on those layers but it's not in this specimen. It, they are present on the model however. And uh, the rest of the testes actually focuses on the histology of the seminiferous tubules which are in the inside. And you can appreciate them here as well. But having that said, this is the testes in an entirety, and uh, a little bit of clinical uh, <clears throat> input in this, that uh, sometimes this testes is not present in the scrotal sac. Sometimes it's actually found in the inguinal canal. This is known as a failure to descend to the testes and it's known as cryptochidism. And it happens basically when there's a low level of testosterone or some other anatomical issue in children. And this is usually corrected easily. Tumors from the testes arise <clears throat> and uh, they're known as seminomas and there are other varieties as well. In those cases, sometimes it's necessary to basically pull out the testes through the inguinal canal by pulling on the cord. And by this way, we can remove and excise the whole testes while ligating the rest of the arteries. It actually makes it really convenient because of this tether attached to the testes. And that was all for the testes. Thank you so much for joining us. Inshallah, next time we'll move on to other specimens. Allah Hafiz.